Greetings, friends in Christ at Emmanuel UCC in Dousman. I am Franz Riegert, Conference Minister. Today I want to celebrate the beloved community of faith that you share in Dousman. And I want to encourage you as you continue to endure and adapt to this seemingly never ending pandemic. These have been challenging months as we have longed to return to full worship experiences but have kept COVID protocols in place for the sake of the wellness of all. Thank you for your patience, your courage, and your conviction that the church will somehow survive this. And as God's people, we will come through this with some new life and some new gifts of technology and a new perspective on our faith. I want to celebrate your recent calling of the Reverend Leanne Rose as your settled pastor. What a joy to share in her gifts and to create this partnership in ministry. Please know that I extend highest hopes and deepest prayers for your ministry together. I also understand that you are the first church in Waukesha County to proclaim an enthusiastic welcome to the LGBTQ plus community. This decision to publicly widen the circle of inclusion reflects the essence of the gospel, to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And I believe this advances the teachings of Jesus in a time when honoring the authentic human experience in every person is vitally important. Bless you for this faithful witness to the notion that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let cheers ring out from UCC congregations all across the Badger State celebrating this milestone with you. Friends, I extend the love of Christ, the grace of God, the peace of the Holy Spirit to be with you. Blessings on a very special day. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome. Welcome to the service of Emmanuel United Church of Christ, our special celebratory service of 10 years of open and affirming ministry in this area of Lake Country. I celebrate you and the work you have been a part of for the last 10 years, and so we celebrate and remember together and prepare for all the next 10 years and the 10 years beyond that. Uh, as Reverend Rieger said, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, I hope you find a welcome and a community here, whether you are joining us in person or online. We like to start our services with celebration, and so this week we have birthdays. Uh, Carol uh, Falls, Stephen Turley, and Mira Lauer, who's the only one we're going to give an age for. She will be five on Saturday. Uh, Melissa and Rick Rivera and Joe and John Quad Joe and John Quadden are celebrating wedding anniversaries this week. Happy anniversary. And we have some membership anniversaries. Um, Kathy Zabrowski has 42 years as a member of Emmanuel and Evelyn Faircloth has 16, so we celebrate your 42 years, Evelyn's uh, 16 years, and all of the years of ministry we have been together. As you are able, will you rise for our call to worship in body or in heart? Gathered in this sacred space, O Creator Spirit, in the multicolored company of your church, on earth and in heaven, we celebrate your creation and invite your presence into our midst. We know, Creator Spirit, that eternity cannot hold you. 
nor can our little words describe the breadth of your faithfulness to us. Yet, in the space of our small heart and in silence, come close and repair us. Creator Spirit, bring new life where we are worn and tired. New love where we have forgiveness where we feel hurt and are wounded, and the joy and freedom of your holy presence where we are prisoners of ourselves. Creator Spirit, in the space of our small heart and in silence, come close that we may dream. Will you join me in prayer? Beloved one, your embrace is a refuge from violence and hatred. Those who have been turned away, forgotten or persecuted, find belonging in you. We hope to embody such love in this place. May our sanctuary, a shelter, a safe place to turn. May we endeavor to learn from each other and grow together in love that protects and uplifts. Amen. before God, confessing before one another and before God those places where we haven't quite lived up to it. Will you join me in prayer? Creator of all things, we have failed to care for all that you have made. We have squandered resources and oppressed others. Forgive us for what we have done or failed to do. Teach us how to be stewards of your creation with care and nurture. Amen. Our God will always love all that God has made. And although we have sinned, God forgives. Receive now the entire forgiveness of all your sins, granted as a gift from a loving God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, as people reconcile to God and one another, let us share signs of peace with one another. Peace be with you. Good morning. Scripture reading today is from Exodus, chapter 16, verses 1 through 18. 
The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people should go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will, be, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to the Israelites, in the evening you should know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard you complaining against the Lord for what we are that you complain against us. And Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. And I'm repeating the, phrase, the uh, Bible uh, study uh, right now. Um, uh, I'm taking my notes from our uh, scripture meetings on Monday, and I would encourage everybody, uh, if possible, to come to them uh, as we take a look at the whole uh, meaning of uh, the scripture in preparation for Sunday. Uh, so here ends the reading of the scripture. Reverend John McKeever Gage shares a poem and a prayer. A prayer of queer thanksgiving, originally written by the Reverend Micah Busey. I sing praises to this little boy no more than seven or eight, who just pranced right up to me and interlaced his own tiny nail-polished fingers with my own and cried out, twins! I sing praises to his choice of glittery green, which perfectly complements my shimmery purple. I sing praises to his guts, his gumption, his presumption that I am a friend, a familiar, a fellow fairy, family, even though we've never met. I sing praises to the street that brings us together and to this fabulous whomever he, she, they will become. I sing praises to the well-coiffed mother, bubbling over and teary-eyed as she exclaims, he saw you all the way across the street and just had to say hello. I sing praises to the baseball-capped father, looking on in quiet pride as he asks, do you paint them yourself or do you have them professionally done? I sing praises to the grandma and the grandpa holding hands and smiling wide as they look one another in the eye and celebrate what their love has made. I sing praises to the dozens of witnesses to the family reunion, the ones who hurry by and the ones who slow down, the ones who look up from their phones to watch history being made, the ones who set aside their cynicism for one brief shining moment so they can join in the smiles, join in the connection as I squeeze the tiny fingers of this seven or eight year old unicorn and proclaim twins.
And I sing praises to the cloud of invisible witnesses that surrounds us. And in the singing and the praising, I feel them appear around us. This is fantasy, but this is real. This is fantasy, but fantasy is what painted our nails in the first place. I see Marcia, brick in hand, ready to take no crap. And Sylvia, microphone primed, ready to take us to task. I see Christine, done up and glamorous, no hair out of place. And I hear Marlena and Sylvester and David crooning as Billy tickles the ivories. I see Langston and Lorraine and James and Oscar and Octavia and Larry scribbling away as Jose and Eve and Michelle critique and queer and complicate. I hear Divine and Candy and Andy and Hibiscus whispering, don't be so serious. Let this just be the silly thing it is. I feel the breeze as Alvin twirls by, and I feel the squeeze as Alan computes the logic of it all. I see Bayard and Harvey and Audrey and Michael and Harry and Gilbert and Edie and Jane and Dick, satisfied and still nudging, content and continuing to fight. With Reverend Troy and Mother Polly praying right along. I hear Leonard and Howard and Sister Rosetta composing a hit as Michael and Willie choreograph a group number, and Frida and Keith and Jean-Michel line us all up for what will surely be a kooky, kooky portrait for the ages. I feel the forces, see the faces of the famous and the foreign, and the cloud opens wider to reveal our mess of martyrs. I see Rita and Matthew, and Brandon, and Roxana, the 32 patrons of the upstairs lounge in New Orleans burned to death in 1973, and the 49 murdered at gunpoint at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando in 2016. I see faces I've never seen before. I hear names I've never known. I hear voices I've never heard before shouting, twins, twins, twins. We are nothing alike, and we are everything alike. We are on the street together, and we are more than worlds apart. We are a rainbow. And we are a cloud, born of color and tears, of triumph and tragedy, feeding the arc of the moral universe that has trampled us, even as we decorate the damn thing and teach it how to bend. We are serious and sassy, glittery and grim, furious and filled with fear that fools itself into fabulosity. We are everything I describe and nothing I describe. We are everything I see, and so much I do not see. We can pick out one another on the street, and we can be strangers in the same parade. We are more than fits inside our ever-expanding initials, and we are only as much as we allow ourselves to be. We are a rainbow and a cloud, bending and bursting, beautiful and terrifying. And I sing praises to the rainbow, and I sing praises to the cloud. I sing praises to the colorful progress, and I sing praises to the storm that shouts, progress is a myth, stop acting so small. You are the universe in ecstatic motion. I sing praises to the universe that we are, 
to the rainbow that we've been, to the cloud we will all become. And I feel that word fizzing up inside me, though it often frightens more than freeze. Family. I sing praises to this family that claims me for who I am and gently shoves me into what I can become. I sing praises to the saints who don't want to be saints, to the martyrs and the heroes who ask for none of the notoriety. I sing praises to the bloodless ties that keep us afloat until the blood ties catch up. I sing praises to the clouds that cry out, families belong together. And I know that it means so much more than what some want it to mean. I sing praises to this fleeting moment on the street. A moment that begins between two nail-polished people and then prisms out, extending the rainbow, creating the cloud. We are twins and we are nothing alike. We are seeking a tribe and we are extending the tribe. We have so much to teach and we have so much to learn. We have eternal praises to sing, and we have eternal thanks to give. Our greatest gift is the light of our color and the salt of our tears. As we recognize one another like children on the busy street and insist on saying, Hello, I see you. I feel this between us and I can't quite explain it. I sing praises to our gift of family recognition. And until all families bend to the love of difference, until this country bends to love of family, I sing praises to this growing familial cloud, rainbow saints painting paths for their yearning yearning children. And I pray not with my own hands clasped together, but with my polished fingers interlaced with any other child I can recognize. Amen. Okay, hard transition. Throughout this, I'm going to use the word queer, which I know has a long and complicated history, as language and words often do. It's currently used in a couple of ways. One is academic. There are queer studies programs, and there are queer theology studies. And another is an all-inclusive, say, an umbrella term. For those of diverse sexual, gender, identities, and expressions, Yes, it can still be used as an insult, but given the right term, most things can. For example, he is such a gym. See, just about anything can. A year after the Pulse nightclub shooting in 2016, oh my gosh, Journalist Justin Mitchell went to Orlando. He went to the side of the club and he saw the memorial. Um, He saw the names and the pictures, the poems and the messages. What really got him, though, were those memorial candles. Lit again, lit anew, lit continually for a year, lifting praises prayers. It reminded Justin of growing up in the Catholic Church, of attending Mass and Sunday School, of learning the songs, of feeling connected to communion. It reminded him of a day in youth group, oh my gosh, of youth group, where the kids were taught that being gay is a sin, and how it severed his relationship to the church and to the divine. 
And as he stood before those candles, all those years later, he saw something he had never seen before. He wrote, a little hard to read, because what many don't realize is that a gay bar is exactly like the church in many ways for the LGBTQ plus community. They both are safe places where its members can go and be vulnerable. They can share their most suppressed feelings, whether it's holding a man's hand or praying to the man upstairs. It's a place where, above all, you feel like you don't feel like anything bad is going to happen to you. You, Emmanuel, are amazing. Some of you have queer kids of your own. Some of those have grown into adulthood, maybe even had kids of their own. There are queer grandchildren and nieces and nephews and cousins and colleagues. And you may not have understood at first. And you may not have done everything right the first time. But what I see in you is that you learned, you grew, and you chose love. Now, this is not so for every queer kid. From the small ones playing dress up or playing with trucks to a teenager filled with changing hormones and feelings that some dub abnormal, to the adult coming to terms with who they have always been. There are queer folks who have been told they have to leave and that they'll have no home to return to, who have been sent out into small towns or big cities. There are trans and queer folks who have been fired from jobs, denied jobs, denied housing. Trans women of color are particularly vulnerable, and often these young people, they're more likely to fall victims of abuse and violence and forced into um, sur the survival sex industry. They are vulnerable. There are queer kids being told that they will never earn the love, earn God's love, being, and being, they are left without community, without support, without something to believe in except the lie that they have been fed that they are unlovable. There are queer kids and queer adults who have been living in the wilderness. The wilderness of lost home, family, community, God. The wilderness where they might not know where their next meal is coming from. The wilderness of wondering if they are lovable, if they were ever loved, if they will ever be loved again. The wilderness of not having a tribe or a community or a safe place, and not just a safe place from violence, but a safe place to be honest and vulnerable and fully themselves. What we see time and time again is that God cares about those who are in the wilderness. God heard and cared about Abraham in the wilderness. God heard Hagar and Ishmael alone and afraid in the wilderness. God heard and cared about Joseph in the wilderness. God heard and cared about the traveling Israelites in the wilderness. And God brought promise and safety and security and sustenance. God sent the Israelites food to meet their needs, to care for their bodies, to prepare them for the next things. God heard their cries and gave them what we needed, they needed. And we, we are called to be of God's business. 
We are called to be of the work of God. We are called to love and care about the things and the people that God loves and cares about. So how do we love and care about those in the wilderness? We are so good at welcoming everyone who comes through the doors of our church. I celebrate that. That is a lot. But do the people who don't come through the doors know? Do the people who are in the wilderness, the wilderness of lost families, lost community, lost faith, identity, God, do they know that they are already loved here? That we have been preparing a welcome, preparing to remind them that they are loved by God and lovable and enough and beautifully made. We are so good at preparing for them, but how do we tell them? How do they know that this is a safe place, a sacred community? What is the manna that we can cover Lake Country and beyond with, with the signs of welcome and community and love that we can leave for someone to walk up to and pick up and ask, what is this? What is the manna that we can rain down, that we, that will, that we can leave that will nourish someone's soul, that can fill someone's heart, that will help them be safe? Is it little flags? Is it more classes and education? Is it documentary movie nights? Is it gathering in spaces beyond our doors? Is it painting the steps? We don't have steps. Painting a path. And I know steps like these can feel vulnerable and scary. And I know sometimes people will say things because I've heard we've been called the gay church. Okay. We are also a church that pri prioritizes accessibility for housing for the housing vulnerable and food for people without. We're also a church that says Black Lives Matter, that seeks relationship with Native populations, that supports refugee resettling. We are a church that strives for the good of children and animals and the earth, that believes in science and takes the Bible seriously. So we're the gay church too. A church that makes a safe place of this building and of this community and in our very lives for those who are in the wilderness. And maybe that makes you feel vulnerable. Because what will people say and how will they respond and what if they respond badly? But maybe it's exactly that vulnerability that is needed to make someone else feel safe. Maybe it's part of the manna that we leave in the world, the thing that someone is desperately needing, that will remind them that God cares for them in the wilderness, that we care about God's people in the wilderness. So beloved community, I celebrate you today of the ongoing work, being a disciple, being part of a community of faith, and being an open and affirming congregation is not a one-time thing. Discipleship, community, church, these are not static, but dynamic. Growing and changing concepts. 
We never, learn, never stop learning from God, from Jesus, from the Bible, from each other. We struggle, we strive, we argue, we forgive, we reconcile, we celebrate, and then we do it all over again. Over and over again with each other and sometimes, yes, with God. Ten years ago, Emmanuel, you reached a milestone of officially becoming an open and affirming congregation. Like our mothers and fathers of faith, it is marked as a moment on a journey so that we can remember and return, renew and refine. And so, whether you were here 10 years ago or you weren't, Will you stand and will you join together as we reaffirm the statement that was made in this community and for who we will be going forward? At Emmanuel UCC, we welcome into full membership and participation in the body of Christ not only persons of every race, language, age, physical and mental ability, economic and marital status, faith background, but also persons of all gender identities and sexual orientations. We affirm and celebrate all loving and committed relationships. We commit ourselves to work diligently to end oppression and, and discrimination wherever, wherever it, it occurs. occurs. Amen. This one's got good words. Let us build a house where love can dwell. Where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true. Where all God's children dare to seek to dream God's reign anew. Here the cross shall stand as witness and a symbol of God's grace. Here is one we claim the faith of Jesus, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where love is found in water, wine, and weed. A banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Hear the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space. As we share in Christ the peace that frees us, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where hands will Beyond the wood and stone To heal and strengthen, serve and teach And live the word they've known Hear the outcast and the stranger Bear the image of God's face Let us bring an end to fear and danger All are welcome, all Let 
us build a house where all our name songs and visions heard and loved and treasured taught and claimed as words within the word built of tears and cries and laughter prayers of faith and songs of grace let this house proclaim from floor to rafter all are welcome all are welcome all are welcome in this place you may be seated congratulations to emmanuel united church of christ for the 10th anniversary of becoming an open and affirming congregation. For those who might not be familiar with what that means, in the United Church of Christ, to be designated open and affirming, it means the congregation has publicly declared that persons of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions are welcome in the full life and ministry of the congregation. This indicates a spirit of hospitality and a willingness to live out that welcome in meaningful ways in a real and tangible way. When adopting an ONA covenant, a congregation is taking seriously the Apostle Paul's admonition to accept one another, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Join us in celebrating this anniversary with, anniversary with Emmanuel UCC, who was the first Christian church in Waukesha County to publicly welcome and embrace the LGBTQ community and who established the P-Flag, Parents and Friends of Lesbian and Gays, chapter in Oconomowoc. Congratulations. We are a congregation that holds each other in prayer, lifts each other up, and just because we like each other, we lift up members of our community. Today, our congregational prayers are for Craig Bernstein and Michael Grant and Linda Berlin. Um, we have prayers of healing and answers for um, many in our community. Uh, for Charlotte Voigt's friend Mary, recently diagnosed with liver cancer, who's been meeting with all the doctors to figure out the next plans. Um, for Jer Marhine, who's continuing to undergo some tests. Um, for Frida Getsch, who's had an answer of an autoimmune, but is still figuring out the medications. Uh, for Corrine uh, May Mayer's son, Jack. Uh, for Fran Pike. For John Quadden Sr. For Greg Jarrett, Sandy Horn's sister, Gail. Uh, for Barbara Fellin, for John Patrick Fellin, and for another of the Fellin clan, Bob, who was um, recently diagnosed with stage four prostate cancer. So, um, Mary is lifting up prayers for her niece, Jessica Branson, who is home from a two-month stay Oh, with Gian, Gian Barr syndrome. She still can't walk, but her spirits but are still fighting. So many prayers for Jessica and to continue with hope and a fighting spirit. Um, the the St. Martins, um, Peter and Judy, are not here today. They were had a COVID exposure and are waiting to get test results. And so continued prayers for their healing for all of those who are continuing to um, seek healing in the midst of COVID. Um, I had that handy dandy little one. I don't know where it went. Um, and we liked candles um, for our, our world 
And while it is our ONA celebration, um, it also was Pride-tober in Milwaukee. So um, as part of that, we are um, lifting up all of our LGBT queer um, family members on this earth who are uh, needing hope and needing community and love. And so uh, may, they, um, may they find a reason to keep going and may they find love. Will you join me now in our prayer for the church and for the world? Forgive us, loving God, when we look for what is lacking rather than rejoicing and the plenty in our lives. Continue to bless us not only with those things we need, but with a, also with a spirit of gratitude. We reap the riches of the land and benefit from the treasures of the earth. Wake us up to the breath of responsibility required to preserve this fertile planet and don't ever let us lose sight of our interconnectedness with it and its fate. Call us to work for justice for all those who are unable to meet their basic needs in our society. Your blessings rain upon us from heaven, O God. Shower us with your healing and surround each person who suffers, cloaking them with your presence and love. We lift up all of those we have named, all of those who live in our hearts. We follow the trail of your saints stretching through miles of wilderness over centuries of grace. Give us the faith which they have showed and the patience when the way ahead seems unclear. Bless, O Lord, these prayers which we raise to you Give assurance of your steadfast promises and peace in your presence. We pray all this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
because much has been given to us, we offer our gifts back to the God who made us and was generous with us. Um, Our offering bowl is in the back. In the middle of our offering bowl is our singing bowl, and we are continuing to support the resettlement of Afghanistan refugees coming through Wisconsin. Um, There's a lot of need, and it sounds like it's way more complicated than I which I always thought, I thought it would be complicated. It sounds like it's even more complicated than that. And, excuse me. And so our gifts um, will generously support uh, folks, families, women, and children who are um, in that transitional wilderness stage. Um, so let us offer a prayer of thanksgiving. God, it is your will to continually shower us with blessings. Take out our abundance and supply the needs with those who have very little. Help us to be the fulfillment of your promises to them. Bless these gifts, your good purpose. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements for our day. There is still time to donate to our neighbors in need Um, offering as well. Oh. The trustees are meeting on Monday at 4. We do have our Bible study on Tuesday morning at 10. It is an excellent opportunity, um, as Stephen said, to to get started thinking about these, these, uh, these texts, things that are also way more complicated than you think at first glance. Um, So it's been wonderful to have conversations uh, with the folks who come. And so I hope you can come too. Friday is a newsletter deadline for November's newsletter. I don't know why I stumbled over that. There are, oh, go back. Oh, sorry. Too far. That's fine. Stop right there. (laughs) They're not listed. Um, There are cards in the back. There are four people who um, graciously made video, three people who made videos and one who let me use their video for participation in our service today. And so there are cards on that card table in the back. I invite you to just sign it, leave a little note, offer a gratitude um, to uh, Ron, Reverend Franz Rieger and Lorraine. Um, the next person we'll see who is Andy Lang um, and John whose name I, Reverend John, who um, was the reading, the prayer of Thanksgiving we heard at the beginning. And so those are um, in the back, and I invite you to sign those. Um, And as I told Charlotte today, I have Charlotte about tree. Good morning. Perhaps you noticed that uh, the Board of Stewards placed a tree out in the gathering area. And for those that are at home online viewing this, um, you'll see a picture of the tree October 17th. Next Sunday, you will learn more about this tree and which is rooted in love and hope that you can participate in completing it and making it fruitful. So you have a little assignment over the weekend, think, or over the week, in thinking of ways that someone you, perhaps, or someone else, has given themselves spreading the love of gifts, talent, and time. So do a little thinking, a little homework, and we'll talk more about this next week. Before we leave our announcement, I do just want to, and he's going to be embarrassed, I do want to celebrate Bill. Well, she's not, she doesn't get to join us often, but was a pivotal part of this community's process of becoming an open and affirming community and of the founding of the P-Flag in Oconomowoc that started here at this church. And so I want to celebrate you and, and um, assisted other congregations. Heartland is an open and affirming community and um, the Heartland UCC church is open and affirming in part because of Bill's 
uh, work in connection with them. And so we celebrate <laughs> that. Hi, my name is Andy Lang, and I'm executive director of the Open End Affirming Coalition. It's a privilege to celebrate with you the 10th anniversary of your decision to become an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. In 2011, Emmanuel UCC became open and affirming congregation number 978. In the following decade, several hundred UCC churches followed your example. Last week, we certified ONA Church number 1,723. You are part of the largest and fastest growing LGBTQ affirming church movement in the world. In the past 10 years, you have restored many who weren't wanted by other churches to the body of Christ. And whether you know it or not, you have saved lives. So you really have something to celebrate today, a life-giving and life-saving ministry that has blessed you and your community. In 2011, Emmanuel adopted an ONA covenant. Now, covenant is a word that has a deep meaning in our tradition. A covenant is a commitment a church makes to live faithfully according to the gospel of God's self-giving love. The journey towards an ONA covenant always begins with prayer and listening, listening to the word of God in the Bible, yes, but also in the stories we share with each other. And from that listening, churches learn God's vision for their future, a future they can face with renewed trust in the power of the Holy Spirit to transform lives. That's what happened here 10 years ago. You listened to God's word, and you made a commitment that nothing would prevent you from showing God's love to your neighbors. And in the years that followed, you lived up to these promises. Dear family at Emmanuel UCC, on behalf of our ONA movement throughout the country, Thank you for who you are and what you have become. May the next 10 years bring you every blessing and much joy as an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. Amen. Will you rise as you're able and join us in our closing hymn? <clears throat> of new dimensions in the face of changing ways who will lead the pilgrim people wandering in their separate ways God of rainbows fiery pillar leading where the eagles soar we are people the journey now and ever, now and ever, now and ever more. Through the flood of starving people, wearing fractions and despair, who will lift the olive branches? Wow. 
community, Emmanuel and beyond, thank you for choosing love. May God fill you with more, with blessing and peace, compassion, and a fight for justice. May it overflow from you into the world until everyone feels that love too. Amen. Amen.